More than 150 million kilometres away from Earth, Elon Musk is hatching a grand plan to build another home for mankind on Mars. It's been a lifelong ambition for the tech billionaire who hopes to tick it off his to-do list by the year 2050. But how feasible is this grand plan? How far has he gone with it? And what does it mean for the future of humanity on Earth? Elon Musk dreams of creating a sustainable human colonization on Mars, and he has never been shy to admit it. In fact, the billionaire is giving everything he's got towards achieving this dream. But is it within his reach? Does Mars have what it takes to support life? Of all the planets in our solar system, Mars is one of the trickiest to explore. It is cold and dry, but not necessarily devoid of life. On the contrary, scientists have suggested that Mars was teeming with life and convincing evidence of water some 4 billion years ago. At the time, the Martian world is said to have contained lakes, rivers, deep oceans and many more life-promising nature-giving elements. Some astrobiologists even suggest that the red planet was more suited to accommodate life than Earth, while some crazy theorists believe that life as we know it here on Earth emanated from Mars. So maybe Elon Musk isn't crazy after all. But what's the reasoning behind all these theories? These days, all the water on the surface of Mars seemed to have disappeared. So it was with the other factors and elements that convinced early scientists that life was present on the planet. However, the planet is believed to share a striking resemblance with Earth in so many ways. According to the official fact sheet, both planets were formed at the same time. They were made up of the same minerals as well, but in different proportions. Both have valleys, mountains, weather and seasons, and volcanoes and ice caps, but certainly not in size. Another difference would be the size of both planets. Earth as we know it is about twice as big as Mars. If Earth were the size of a baseball, Mars would be no bigger than a ping pong ball. And lastly, Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun, which tells the true story of how far away it is in deep space. I mean, if all the claims and suggestions made by scientists are true, then we'll need to see for ourselves. And Elon Musk is keen to take us there. Somewhere in Boca Chica, Texas, Musk and other SpaceX workers are burning the night candle to construct the vehicle that will ferry us to Mars. In case you're wondering, the Starship is a gigantic rocket with unprecedented flying ability. Work has been ongoing on it for a while, but recent reports suggest that it's nearing completion. And once it's done, it will be the only spacecraft capable of making multi-planetary trips, meaning humans would soon be able to travel between stars, planets and galaxies. But of course, the Starship wouldn't be limited to transporting humans alone. It will be used to move cargo containing important amenities like oxygen tanks, water, food, a solar power kit, or any power electric generating system. Elon Musk believes that to create a self-sustaining city on Mars, we'll need to move about 1 million tonnes of cargo to the Red Planet. According to Musk, the cost of sending each tonne of cargo is estimated to be around $100,000. This means that the final cost of shipping the necessary amenities to Mars would be between $100 billion or $10 trillion. Depending on where the pendulum falls, Elon Musk could be able to afford this lofty dream. The tech billionaire is worth well over $200 billion, so you imagine that if the final price ends up being $100 billion, he could easily write a check to offset the bill. But perhaps we might need to find a new sponsor or abort mission if the final price falls anywhere near $10 trillion, which is nearly 12% of the valuation of the world's economy. Currently, the Super Heavy Starship rocket is said to have a maximum payload capacity of between 100 to 250 tonnes per trip. If we equate this with the amount of cargo Musk suggested, we'll need between 4,000 to 10,000 Starship landings to fully colonise Mars. That's a bit overboard and would definitely require decades of hard work and patience to get it done. But thankfully, Musk is working tirelessly to increase the payload capacity of Starship, which could reduce the amount of time required to liberate the Red Planet. As you may have heard already, the proposed trip to Mars will come with a whole lot of complications. First and foremost, the special alignment between Mars and Earth, which is when both planets come closest to each other, happens once every 26 months. Travelling outside this window makes the trip twice as risky. Also, on average, the trip to Mars will last between 7 to 9 months. 
It is definitely not seven to nine months of chilling and lounging. All that while scientists will be exposed to intense cosmic radiation from the sun, stars and galaxies, as well as other risks that we may not be aware of already. The first landing on the Martian planet will carry the most critical supplies to support human existence on the planet. Nonetheless, the first few years for humans on Mars will be very demanding and less enjoyable. As Musk reckons, the probability of dying on Mars is much higher than on Earth, and if we are able to land successfully, there will be very little time for leisure, at least in the early stages of exploration. Initially, we'll have to live in domes until we're able to reconfigure Mars to become an Earth-like planet. We imagine that would spoil all the fun at the beginning and limit the interaction between the inhabitants. You wouldn't be able to walk around without a spacesuit, and if you're an adventurer planning to visit Mars in the early stages of the colonization process, you'd better tick off sightseeing from your to-do list. This is because Mars doesn't have breathable oxygen like we have on Earth. The pressure is extremely low and the average temperature is around minus 60 degrees Celsius. You don't even want to imagine what could happen to you in these conditions. But, as we mentioned earlier, all of these can be reversed. To do this, scientists will have to create a magnetic field by heating up the frozen ice on the poles of the red planet. And of course, Elon Musk is contemplating a few ideas already. According to the tech billionaire, the fastest way to achieve this is to drop nuclear weapons over the planet's poles, which would kickstart the greenhouse effect. Sounds like a crazy idea. Well, yes, but nobody will care if and when it works. Another way to terraform Mars would be to place large orbital mirrors around the planet to reflect sunlight. The extra sunlight would help to increase the temperature on Mars, melting away water ice on the planet's surface and rapidly driving water from the permafrost into the Martian ecosystem. Redirecting comets and asteroids to collide with Mars could also help us reconfigure the density of the atmosphere on Mars. Elon Musk believes there is a 70% chance that he will visit the Red Planet in his lifetime, and he's keen to tag along as many people as he can. We want to make it available to anyone who wants to go, Musk said. Tentatively, the cost of moving to Mars is estimated to be around $100,000, but no worries if you cannot afford it, because according to Musk, loans will be available for people who are keen to relocate to the Red Planet. Still not convincing enough? Well, Elon Musk says there will be lots of jobs on Mars. So, theoretically speaking, you could take the loan to relocate to Mars and pay it off by working on the Red Planet. According to speculations, the first human flight to Mars should set off sometime around 2030, and the one million people needed to create the sustainable city should have arrived by the year 2050. The big question is, will you be part of them?